Kim, I spent most of my career working inside a university system, and yet I talked to a lot of people through those years who wanted to make money with their bees. What ideas have you got? Well, I'll tell you, I've spent a lot of my career inside a building, too, but fortunately, I got to get out and go do stories on people who were successful at making money, so I got some ideas. Okay, well, good. Hi, I'm Jim Tube. And I'm Kim Flottam. Today, we're at Honey Bee Obscura, where we're going to talk about making money with your bees, maybe. You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, host Kim Flottam and Jim Too explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world in an engaging and informative discussion meant for all beekeepers, long timers, and those just starting their journey with bees. So sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. Kim, give us some ideas on what you think you can do, we can do, others can do, or what anyone should do if they want to try to make some money with their bees. Well, there's three things to sit down and think about before you do anything, and that is the first thing you want to think about is, do I have the time? The second thing you want to think about is, do I have the equipment I'll need to do whatever it is I end up doing? And the third thing you got to think about is you're going to be spending more time not with your family than you are now. So once you've got those resolved, then it gets a lot easier because you can start thinking about the actual things you're going to do. And every beekeeper makes honey. One way or the other, that's true. You're right. I was thinking about energy, Kim, and that list you just put out, time and family loss and whatever. You didn't mention energy, just the work that's sometimes involved. So what kind of task am I taking on? That's a good question. And and, and like I said, sit down and do some thinking before you jump into this and find out you've spent a lot of money and you can't do it. It doesn't work for you. You're not, you're too old. You're not fast enough, whatever, before you you start spending any money. But like I said, every beekeeper makes honey. Let me rephrase that. Most beekeepers sometimes make honey. How's that? I was no, I wasn't going to challenge you on that, but you've said that now twice, <laughs> and I'm thinking I don't always make honey. Of course, I never make it. My bees make it, but I take it from them. Well, if you're if you make honey, if you're making honey, and you know um, how much honey you're going to have extra, if you've got three colonies and you always end up with two boxes full of honey that you don't need to overwinter on, you've got two boxes full of honey that you can sell. The easiest, cheapest, and least painful way is to extract that honey, put it in a five-gallon bucket, and sell it to another beekeeper who is selling honey. That way, you get your pail back. You haven't spent any money. You've already got your extractor. You're not out. The only thing you're out of is a little bit of time that you use to extract that, and you're gonna, you have to extract anyway, and two more supers aren't going to take you forever. So... That's probably the easiest, best, fast way to make a little bit of money to start off with. Yep. I'm afraid the people listening might think I'm lazy, but I took that one click lower, not up, but down. I took my full supers to a beekeeper and had them extract them for me. And so I got my honey back and my empty supers back, honey in a can, supers in the back of the truck. And I didn't set all that ex- extracting equipment up. That's a that's not uncommon at all. Is you have somebody else do the work for you, and they keep part of the crop, and and you you're not out anything at all. Which so that's a good way to look at starting. Either extract it or let somebody else extract it and keep part of what the, you harvested, and and, yep. and you've got cash in your pocket, and you don't have a sore back or a sore arm. And I don't have all that clean up. Yeah. I sound lazy. I'm not lazy. I, I promise you beekeepers. I'm not lazy, but it's just so much time, so much energy in these things. Take it another half a step further then. You've got this honey in a five gallon pail, either from the person who extracted it for you or that you extracted. And you want to sell this honey. You're going to keep a bunch and give it away, but there's something you want to sell. Then you got to look at bottles, labels, all of those sorts of things. Um, so 
you know, shop around for those first. What do you want? The common Queen Lang glass jar? Uh, probably not the cheapest container you can find. What's going to be the cheapest container? Quart jar? Pint jar? Yep, well, that's that's true. I was it, as you were talking, I was thinking about some of those decorative jars. You know, sometimes it's a common canning jar. You have that rustic look instead of the classic bee yep. look. And and um, you know, every every supply company sells labels, custom made labels with your name and the weight and all of that and address on it. So so you could go. I know Better Bee does a good job of labels. They do a really good job with labels. What are you going to call it? Honey? Just pure honey? Or, without doing anything else, do you give it an identity? Yeah. And the identity could be Medina County honey or Wayne County honey. Yeah. It could be fall honey, summer honey, spring honey. There's a there's an old beekeeper in Medina named Kim Flottam. <laughs> and he said, never call your honey wildflower honey. Exactly. <laughs> Is that what you're saying now? <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> give it a name. Give it an identity. And I'll tell you what, that, that does a couple things. One is it makes it special because most people aren't going to, most people don't call their honey something. And and so it's it's got an identity. If you're selling it like a farm market and you've got fall honey, when that customer comes back and says, you know, I bought a jar of something called fall honey from you. You got any more of that? That was really good. It's just dark and strong, and I, it's, I really like that kind of honey. And then what you can do is you go, ooh, and you look down underneath the bench, and you, God, and you reach out, and you got, you got the last one. And, of course, you charge double. For, no, you don't charge double for that one. But <laughs> Beekeepers never gouge. You don't gouge. No. Give it an identity. So that your customer knows it's from you and and can ask you for that honey again. And another thing you can do with honey that a lot of people do now is infuse it. You know, you put something in it and, and you mix a couple of flavors, the flavor of your honey and the flavor of what it, whatever it is you're infusing. Yeah. And, and that stuff can be almost free. You know, you can put cinnamon in it. That's going to cost you a little bit. But what I like is, you know, hot pepper infused honey. Some people like it really hot. Some people like just a touch of hot. But you can, you know, cut some cut some peppers. Mm. Yeah. So the peppers good. are actually in the honey. Yeah. yeah. Well, what? How, I don't want to get off the subject. We don't have much time. But how do you eat such a thing? On what? <laughs> You got to put it, I don't know what kind of container you, you use, and you can either leave the peppers in when you sell it, or maybe just one on the bottom, so that you can say, yeah, pepper-infused honey, and point to that one pepper, uh, or or you strain it out once you get it home. Either okay. way, any way to make that happen. Well, I don't, I don't want to tie that up. There's many other options that, that people could consider as they start this notion of how to make money. Yeah. But... Pepper infused honey is a new one to me. Well, it it works and it sells well. And and the other thing, if you've been at this long enough, and now long enough isn't a, isn't decades, it's just long enough. Is what was the source? Of, what was the source of your honey? And if you know that you put an empty box on when when the locust started blooming, and you took a full box off when the locust was done blooming, you can be pretty sure that what you've got is a box of mostly locust honey. So you can call it locust honey. Yep, that's about as good as it gets for beekeepers. Kim is just having an idea of what's in bloom. Yeah, what and where. Some people even move their bees to places where there's things blooming. Yep. And we've got a place here in Medina County, not quite halfway to work, when I used to work in town, that had probably 200 wild uh, crab apples growing in it. It's beautiful in the spring. But a, co- a couple colonies play, place there, I could probably call it crab apple honey. Yeah. Because there's yeah, nothing else blooming. Well. Kim, let's take a break at this point and allow our sponsors to talk to us about what they do. Better Bee is pleased to sponsor today's episode of Honey Bee Obscura podcast. For over 40 years, Better Bee has supplied beekeepers across the country with the tools, equipment, and knowledge needed to succeed. Because many Better Bee employees are beekeepers themselves, they understand your needs and challenges and are better prepared to answer your beekeeping questions. 
From their colorful catalog to their support of beekeeper educational activities, including this podcast, Better Bee truly lives up to their tagline of beekeepers serving beekeepers. See for yourself at betterbee.com. Yeah, and, and not only is this, you've got varietal honey, you've got bulk honey in a pail. You've got honey you're just going to bottle and sell. You've got uh, uh, varietal honey. You've got infused honey. And that's probably as complicated as you want to get. I mean, you you can get more complicated, but then you're yeah. going to have to have more honey. So, so, you know, pick a couple of those ways, just bulk honey, sell it to another beekeeper or bottle it yourself and, and uh, make something with it. Another, th- another thing to think about, you know, we talked about this before. If you're at all skilled at construction, uh, if, if you can take things, wooden things apart and put them back together again, or you can make yeah. things out of wood, getting bees out of the side of people's houses is, can be a pretty good way to make money. I oh, couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah, I couldn't do it because I don't have the tools and I don't have any of the skills, but there are people that do. That's an interesting and demanding and necessary undertaking. Those those people who really excel at that are surgeons of opening up houses and buildings. And, you know, they're like heroes. And, you, of course, you got to charge. Sometimes, you know, there's hydraulic lifts involved and scaffolding and major undertaking. But that is uh, that can really grow into a big business, and 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 it doesn't have to though. I mean, you can keep it really small. I mean, you, if you can go look at that's a job, true. You, you can, yeah. Can I say if you can say no yes. that you that you can keep it small? You can go look and say up on the third floor under the eave of that window. That's going to be a no. <laughs> but if it's in your garage, you know, on an eight foot ceiling. That's a possibility. So I can see where you're going with keeping it small. I think that's what you're saying. And and so you don't need to invest a lot in equipment. You may already have it. You may not have to invest anything. A step ladder and a crowbar may be yeah. all that you're going to need for the jobs that you're going to take. And what do you charge? That's the question. And yeah. um, I got two pieces of advice that the people that I know that do this for a living tell me. Call up five people who are doing it no matter where. Call up five people that are already doing it and see what they charge. A lot of them will give you a per hour charge. I charge so much per hour. Some of them will get you a job charge, but a lot of them give you a per hour mm. charge. And and I know what my time per I know what my I know what my time per hour is worth. I know what I would charge for that, and I wouldn't do it for less. So I can look at a job and say to the homeowner. It's probably going to take me a half a day to do this, and I charge this much per hour. Yep. And then they make up your mind for you. And everything's in the details, I would think, Kim. Uh, is is the beekeeper, the bee remover, is he going to restore the house, or does he just get the bees out, and then someone else comes in and puts it back together? That's the so easiest way to do it. Everything's in the details yep. of it. Take it apart, get the bees, the wax, clean it up, get off the ladder and say, call your man because uh, you're going to have to put this back together yeah. before it rains. And the more you put together, I mean, that there's got, this got to be, this got to be money. The quickest question is always, can you live with those bees? The easiest <laughs> thing to do is to live with them. They yeah. really need to come out. So there's, a, there's, there's two ways you can get into making a little bit of money with, with your bees, actually taking other bee, bees out of other people's houses isn't making it with your bees, but the skills that you learn with your bees, you're applying to that house. Uh, and you've got smoker and you've got, maybe you've got a vacuum, maybe not. Yep. Um, and you got a bee suit. So several ways to sell honey, several ways to remove bees. I think, I think real quick, the next one and the last one we'll have time for today is what do you do with the beeswax? Oh, yeah. That's good. So you're assuming that you got a crop big enough to generate meaningful amounts of beeswax. Well, not even meaningful amounts. You know, you could you could put a couple of three pound coffee cans full of wax cappings in a in a solar melter, melt it down, kind of have it strained out. There's a bee, there's ten beekeepers out there that'll give you money for that right now. 
Yep. And how much you charge is, you can, well, it's how much can you get, A, how much are they willing to pay? But both yeah. magazines, both of the magazines uh, talk about bulk beeswax. There is a place to start selling it. If you've melted it and it's clean and it's refined and you've, you know, strained it, it's going to be more, but you've got more time invested in it. But a chunk of beeswax is, is a, you know, for a lot of beekeepers, they're going to take that chunk of beeswax and turn it into a candle, into a Christmas ornament, into something that's, you know, going to be worth five times what they paid for it for the pound. So, but of course, so much, so be... much of this is not beekeeping yeah. that we've been talking about. So much of this is marketing, processing, bottling, hauling, trucking, candle making, sawzall work. <laughs> I mean, there's not really much, you know, much supering and queen concern going on. So this is all beekeeping related, beekeeping yeah. ancillary. But but like I said, I, I, I'm going to bet that just about everyone listening to this at one point or another is living with somebody who has said, "I thought we were going to make money doing this." <laughs> don't don't don't, Kim. <laughs> that's my wife. That's my brother's. That's my brother's wife. That's my mother. I mean, I've heard that question from everybody through the years. So, so if that's the question you're getting asked every spring when you've got to go get more packages because you can't keep your bees alive or yeah. you want to expand or whatever, um, then here's some ways, here's some things to think about, about making some money. You know, there's, you're going to have honey, you're going to have wax. And if you're a skilled craftsman, you can take houses apart. That's right. Well, we didn't mention pollination, but that's for later. Yeah, that's that's his own world. What do you do <laughs> if you want to haul bees around for pollination? That's a standalone project. So, and another one is bees. You can sell bees. Yeah, I mean, you can sell them in boxes. You can sell them in hives. You can sell bees. So that's going to take some beekeeping skill. We'll get to that in a little bit. Well, there's you can make money. I mean, you really can. And you don't have to be a perfect beekeeper to do it. I mean, you can lose some bees this year, and you can still make money with well, the wax that you're melting down, getting bees out of houses. You caught you know, me off guard with that. I'm still trying to think of one perfect beekeeper. So far, nobody's come to mind. Not, not you, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I'm still working on a perfect beekeeper, but I, I guess I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right, well, down the road a little bit, we'll look at pollination and contracts and some of those things that you got to think about again. Yeah. You're going to need to know more about bees, but it isn't all about bees. It's all about how you uh, look at yourself and, and the way you want to run your operation. So until then, I'll catch you later. All right. Always enjoy talking. Thank you. Thank you.